Hello, I'm Derek. I've got the film crew here today and we are pleased to welcome you to the inaugural episode of Warp Board Woodworking. Today's project is a Christmas ornament. Now I realize I'm a little late or I'm extra early. I'll let you choose. Anyways, a little background on today's project. I'm not a very creative person. The only way I usually come up with a good idea is if I accidentally stumble into it. And that's exactly what happened on this Christmas ornament. It all started back in November with Alan Stratton and Carl Jacobson's Christmas Ornament Challenge. While I was looking for some wood to build a Christmas ornament for that, I stumbled across this blank. It's a blank that I glued up previously and, uh, and I didn't end up you know, liking how it came out so I just tossed it back in the box and thought maybe someday I could do something with it. Well, I didn't give it a second thought at the time. But it was a few weeks after that I got into a pen swap over on IAP, the International Association of Pen Turners, and the theme was construction. Now as part of this pen swap you also had to make a Christmas ornament. So I remembered this blank and I thought it might be something I could use because it's made of uh, plywood and masonite, you know, construction materials. Well I went out and I dug it out and I laid it on my bench and and although I didn't end up using it, it was laying on my bench when I was trying to come up with an idea for a Christmas ornament. Um, if you'll notice, here's kind of the, the design of this. And I thought if you added a couple more pieces of masonite in there, you could almost make a snowflake pattern out of it. So that's what we'll be doing. It just so happens that I have a couple pieces of masonite here and uh, and some quarter inch plywood. Uh, basically this stuff was like backer material for like cabinets and vanities and whatnot. They're just some scraps. Uh, so we're gonna see what we can do with them. So let's get started. Now I'm gonna begin by ripping these into uh, four inch pieces. Now four inches isn't a hard and fast rule, it just happens that one of my pieces, or actually three of my pieces are roughly eight inches and one of them is 13 inches. So four inches kind of makes it um, even size strips. I'll get two out of the eight inch pieces and three out of the 13 inch pieces. I have a plywood blade here in my table saw simply because this quarter inch plywood, I will be cutting cross grain on it and this should reduce the tear out. Alright, I switch back to a regular blade and I'll finish cutting these masonite strips now. Well now that I've got all these cut into four inch strips, I've looked them over and I've noticed that these boards have, let's see if I can get this up here, a void right there that goes through all the way through. Um, since this ornament is going to, you're going to be seeing the edge there, I'm going to go ahead and cut them out. So I laid down a little wax paper and I'm going to just start gluing this thing up. You know nowadays these uh, name brand glue spreaders are all the rage. You know, Rockler makes one, uh, several of the woodworking magazines have them in them now. I never knew how, how good they were until I got my cell phone here. My, my personal favorite here, it's, uh, it's made by Era, but you know, I also know uh, Tide, Tide makes one too, so. Uh... All right, so we'll just let that sit and dry overnight. Have a look in the morning. All right, let's pull the clamps off and see what we have. All righty, I'm just gonna knock some of this dried glue off and uh, we'll head over to the table saw. All right, all I'm doing here is just gonna run it through and clean these sides up.
All right, now that we've got that cleaned up on the table saw, we can see what we have here. As you can see, it's just a sandwich that has uh, six layers of plywood and five layers of masonite. I'm going to go ahead and cut this board down to four equal lengths now. All right, so I've went ahead and cut my pieces down to four equal lengths, and I've uh, marked on here a good face. All right, let's head over to the table saw. All right. So I got my blade set at 45 degrees. Uh, we're gonna make, we're gonna send it through like this once, and then we're gonna simply flip it over like that and send it through again so that we should have a 45 degree angle. Or a 90 degree angle, I'm sorry. One thing I should have mentioned before um, is anytime you're working with masonite, it creates some awful dust. So make sure you wear a dust mask or a respirator or something to that effect. All right, let's get this done. Now once you've uh, made these two cuts, it's important to get your square out and check for 90 degrees. As you can see, we're pretty good here. If you need to, you might have to adjust your blade a little bit so that this is 90 degrees because that is very important. Now that I've got that dialed in, we'll go ahead and do the other three. Alright, so I set my blade back to 90 degrees and adjusted my fence so that when we make this cut, it's just going to be cutting this, tri or, uh, this point off to make a triangle. Alright, so there's our four triangles that will glue together to make a square. Um, first we need to cut some pieces of masonite to fit between each one of those. So we'll get a measurement on that and rip a couple strips real quick. Alright, so I ripped a couple pieces here uh, to fit between there. So we'll go ahead and start gluing these up. Alright, so we'll set that one aside, do the other one. Alright, we'll let them two set for a little while and then we'll come back and put glue on the other side. Well, I ain't got a great fit right now. I'm going to go do a little work on the belt sander. Alright, so I just got back from the belt sander, got everything smoothed up, fits a lot better now. So we're going to go ahead and glue another piece of hardboard in. There we go. Now, once again, we'll let the glue dry for a while. Well, I guess instead of just watching the glue dry, we could take a break. Well, you guys got cookies? Cost me one. Come on. <laughs> Give me another one. What do you mean that's the last one? Seriously? Ah. Alright, that should be dry. Now I'm going to take it over to my miter saw and cut some slices. All right, I'm going to cut these at 3 sixteenths of an inch. There you have it. All right, so after a little light sanding, I like to put a coat of oil on these. Uh, I use tongue oil. You could use uh, mineral oil, um, boiled linseed oil. It just kind of helps. pop the the grain so called of the plywood and uh, and then darkens the masonite a little too to give it good contrast you can see now how the layers of the plywood they really pop I'll let that sit a little while and then I'll do the other side the tongue oil is dried now 
And now comes the point where we're going to give this ornament a little class. We're going to take it from fridge art to museum quality. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a frame around this. Let me head over to the wood pile and see what I can find. All right, so I went and I dug through my collection of wood and I come up with this. Oh, this is perfect. This will make an excellent frame. It's a, it's a waterfall, quilted, curly, flame, pine with excellent rays and above average eyes. I hope the camera's picking this up. It's just beautiful. You know, that's quite a mouthful, so usually they just shorten that up and they call it common. All right, let's head over to the table saw and get to cutting this. Okay, so now we're going to cut a rabbit for our ornament to fit in. I've lowered my blade to about an eighth inch, and we're just going to make a couple passes. All right, that should work. Now we'll go to the router, put some profiles on there. If you just give me a few seconds here, I'll change the camera over to the router. And done. All right, so I got a chamfer bit in my router, got my fence set up, and uh, we'll make a couple passes here. All right, I'm going to raise my router just a little bit for the final pass to get a nice smooth finish. There we go. All right, now I'm going to use a sanding block here just to kind of put a little transition here between the chamfer. kind of break the edge. Works for me. All right, now that I got this all sanded, I'm going to take it over to my table saw. All right, so no matter how you decide to, to cut these little pieces for the frame, whether you use your table saw or your miter saw, um, these are small parts in your and you know if you tried to hold them by hand your fingers would be pretty close to the blade so um, just play it safe you know I make a little uh, a little holder here all it is is it's a, a piece that's the exact same width as the frame material and then I screw this little thin piece of wood back here the screws right there and then uh, I just put a dab of hot glue right there at the end and uh, that's what I use to hold the piece so my fingers don't have to come near the blade you just slide that in you can see that little thin piece flex slide it back till it hits and, and that's plenty to hold that um, for the cut so you know I'm sure there's a lot more complicated ways of doing it but this is a quick simple easy way that keeps your fingers away from the blade Just a little bit of glue. All right, take the tape off, give it a light sanding. We're ready for a couple coats of lacquer. All right, now that the lacquer's dried, all we have to do is put on the finishing touches. Basically, we'll just drill a hole for the eye screw. And there you have it. All right, so there you have it. Using just uh, ordinary construction materials, we was able to make this little Christmas ornament that uh, any word worker could appreciate. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And remember, be safe, stay passionate, and make something. What do you mean I can't say that? 
All oh, right, yeah. David Picciuto. I knew I'd heard that somewhere. Hmm. What about, what about if we uh, just take the be safe part off and just say, uh, stay passionate, make something. You know, it makes us seem more edgy, you know. Uh, get out there and make something. We don't care if you lose a finger. No? All right, fine. How am I supposed to make videos that anybody's gonna watch if you guys won't let me steal everybody else's ideas? Okay, just cut that last part out and fade to black then. Just because the Sopranos did it, we can't do it? Ugh. Fade to blue then.